Hello, wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss an unusual phenomenon in physics that scientists usually refer to as gallium anomaly. An anomaly that was discovered approximately two decades ago and that still has no explanation. But the anomaly that potentially hints at the existence of somewhat unusual neutrinos that could maybe explain a lot of mysteries in the universe, including, of course, as always, dark matter. And so let's discuss this in a little bit more detail. But first, let's talk about the experiment where all of this was discovered and how all of this was started. And all of this begins right after USSR fell apart. Back then, the Soviet Union had a lot of brilliant scientists, but unfortunately, no money. And so in order to encourage collaboration and to create better relations with the now newly created Russia, Soviet and American scientists proposed an experiment known as SAGE. Soviet American Gallium Experiment. And its purpose was relatively simple. Here, by taking a bunch of gallium and putting it in a tank underneath the mount known as Andirchi, basically in order to shield it from a lot of cosmic radiation, this new scientific collaboration was trying to measure the amount of neutrinos coming from the Sun in order to basically solve a somewhat old mystery. It was known as the solar neutrino problem, and it was basically a kind of a discrepancy between how many solar neutrinos are supposed to come from the Sun based on the physical predictions and the actual observations from various neutrino detectors. And though earlier explanations basically suggested that maybe our model of the Sun is incorrect and maybe the Sun is like super hot and super pressurized, or vice versa, eventually by early 2000s, the solution was discovered. Turns out, neutrinos, as you might have learned from one of the videos in the description, which by the way, you should watch because it explains so much more, seem to continuously change their own type or their own flavor, oscillating between electron, muon, and tau neutrino pretty much at all times. And so neutrinos were discovered to be in this state of superposition between three different types, and so sometimes they're just not detected by certain types of neutrino detectors. And this actually solved this solar neutrino problem pretty much right away, with the discovery also resulting in a Nobel Prize. And so technically, SAGE experiment was actually no longer needed. Funnily enough, around the same time, the Russian government tried to actually sell all of this gallium, mostly because it's actually really expensive, but the scientists resisted and they wanted to continue the experiment just to see what else they discover. As a matter of fact, this was one of the few such experiments around the planet and they did actually suspect that something unusual is being discovered because of the data they were collecting. Now, one of the reasons they actually chose gallium is because it's a very good target for electron neutrino, the one we expect from the sun. And so here, as various electron neutrinos occasionally combine with gallium, they're supposed to convert one of the neutrons into a proton turning gallium into germanium. And so by then collecting the samples and counting the number of germanium atoms, it would become possible to work out the overall number of neutrino interactions. And they were collecting these samples pretty much every month for years and years and years. But in that data, something strange continuously reappeared. When they counted the number of germanium atoms, they seemed to be approximately 20% less than what the scientists expected theoretically. And though at first it was obviously believed to be some kind of an error somewhere, since every single sample collected displayed the same 20% deficit, after several years this became known as the gallium anomaly. The unusual deficit of germanium atoms and the unusual discrepancy that did not have a very good explanation. But there was an obvious way to resolve this and to figure out if this is actually a mistake with measurements or the equipment. And so a new experiment began in 2014 known as BEST, Baxan experiment on sterile transitions that used two gallium chambers instead of one and then compared the results. And interestingly, in both cases, there was again that 20% deficit. As a matter of fact, because this experiment is still going on, even the data from the last two years showed the same results. A 20-24% to lower than expected detection, once again confirming the anomaly. And so naturally this led to a lot of additional explanations that most likely did not involve new physics. And while to date, pretty much all those explanations have been kind of disproved, except for maybe a few. And one of them was in regards to the half-life of the element germanium produced in these experiments. Maybe previous calculations for its half-life were actually incorrect, which would definitely explain the anomaly. And so in the most recent study from just a few days ago, that's basically what the researchers decided to focus on in the process of discovering that yeah, no, the actual half-life seems to be correct. 
It was discovered to be 11.468 days, suggesting that germanium cannot explain this anomaly either. And because this was now detected by three separate experiments, we have two in Russia and one in Italy known as Galax, this definitely suggested potentially new physics. Especially because none of the other explanations involving miscalculation or problems with the equipment seem to explain what's going on. So there was something unusual happening with these neutrinos, and even after these 20 to 30 years, nobody knew what. But one of the suggestions was that it was potentially pointing at an additional type of a neutrino that was possibly undetectable by other experiments, but clearly visible here. And one proposition that made a lot of sense to many scientists was the mysterious sterile neutrino. A still hypothetical particle that's supposed to interact only through gravity and that would also most likely come in three separate flavors, but most importantly, would actually have a right-hand chirality as opposed to other neutrinos. Now in physics, and I guess in a lot of other sciences, chirality refers to handedness. You have things that are left-handed and things that are right-handed. Now, so far, pretty much all particles out there seem to have partners of both types. But that was not the case for neutrinos. The three types of neutrinos we have, they all seem to be left-handed. So, where's the right-handed partner? And here the hypothetical proposition was for some kind of a sterile neutrino, which still has not been discovered, but could actually explain so many mysteries in the universe, including the unusual asymmetry between matter and antimatter, or basically why there isn't a lot of antimatter out there, and would of course be a really good candidate for the mysterious dark matter, a particle that only interacts with things through gravity, and a particle that's just super difficult to detect. Yet here, in these experiments, somehow the scientists kept finding more and more evidence for its existence. And specifically one of the explanations basically suggests that sometimes some of the electron neutrinos emitted by various radioactive sources can also oscillate into a sterile neutrino that does not interact with gallium, thus preventing germanium from forming with this potentially happening approximately 20% of the time. And more intriguingly, some of these sterile neutrinos could actually possess more mass than regular neutrinos, thus becoming a perfect candidate for the invisible dark matter. Or at least that's one of the explanations for now. And currently, there doesn't seem to be any other explanation for this very bizarre gallium anomaly. Three separate experiments seem to have produced pretty much the same results, and in all three experiments, only 80% of electron neutrinos interacted with gallium to turn it into germanium. The other 20% potentially became sterile neutrinos or possibly did something else. Either way, currently, this is one of the most mysterious and one of the most unusual mysteries in physics, and possibly one of the most important anomalies that if resolved could help us understand the universe in ways we could never explain it before. And though we're obviously not anywhere closer to an actual solution, there's a big chance that in the next decade or so, this might actually lead to a major breakthrough in physics that could once again lead to another Nobel Prize. But until someone figures out exactly what's going on here, or someone can explain this in some other way, that's pretty much all I wanted to mention. Check out all the links in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.